this past weekend, I took a little break from Nintendo Prime because my kids needed me. They needed their dad. They needed to have some fun times with dad. But just because I wasn't around doesn't mean that things stop happening. In fact, things happened right before the weekend that failed to come across my desk until Saturday. And I just had to wait till now to talk about it. And this is because a piece of my childhood is no more. And I'm kind of going to miss it. So for those who haven't heard, Mad Cats, the peripheral company that made a whole bunch of peripherals for consoles and PC for, I don't know, almost 30 years. I think they were founded in 1989. Uh, They are gone. They have filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in in the U.S. and uh, some sort of bankruptcy in Canada, where they are located, and all of their assets and everything have been handed over to a company called Price Water House Coopers Inc., who are now the trustees of all the assets, who are going to liquidate it so they can pay off all of their various creditors. Uh, employees are no longer, like, there is no employees. The entire board has resigned, and all of the employees have been locked out of the offices and been told to go home. So that's it. Mad Cats is done. And I just want to draw attention to this because Mad Cats was a big part of my childhood. They were always one of the go-to companies for cheap peripherals. And I know there's, you know, a long-standing thing with cheap peripherals that they're not very good, right? Uh, you know, you look at some of the PDP GameCube-style controllers that work as classic controller pros. You look at uh, a, a lot of the peripherals out there that come from these third-party companies and they're generally not that good. They break. They don't last long. Uh, they're almost worth getting warranties on, but because they're so cheap, uh, I don't know. I've never really bought a warranty on any of these third-party peripheral makers. But I did own a lot of Mad Cat stuff as a kid, and I understood that there's a market for this, especially when you're a child, right? You don't have a lot of money. You got, you got your allowance. You got maybe some money you earned doing chores, uh, if that wasn't part of your allowance or in addition to your allowance, uh, you some you know you're 15, you have a job, you know your parents signed up and let you get a job in the United States. That's great. Or you you know mow people's lawns and and earn money that way. Or had your Kool Aid stand on the corner like I did when I was a kid. Uh, either way, heck, maybe the only money you have is your birthday money. It, assuming you get birthday money, I did when I was a kid. So I you know. I didn't have a lot of money when I was a child. So when I wanted to get games, it had to come out of the little bit of money I did have, or I had to hope and pray I got it for my birthday or Christmas, as those were the only two times per year that I got gifts. And, I mean, that makes sense. I Even today, I don't expect gifts from anyone. If I do get a gift, great. But, again, a couple times a year, that's about it. So, otherwise, I buy everything myself. And I'm 30 now. It's no big deal. If I really, really want something, I will find a way to purchase it. Uh, For the most part, within reason. Um, Obviously, I have budget and children and things to worry about. However, Mad Cats was there for me when I was a kid. If I wanted extra Nintendo 64 controllers, I bought Mad Cats versions. If I wanted memory cards, I couldn't afford the official branded ones, but I could afford several Mad Cats versions. And yes, that meant I dealt with the various issues those peripherals had, such as occasionally deleting save data. That sucked. That was a real thing. I think I even had a Mad Cat's Rumble Pack for my Nintendo 64. Uh, and what really sunk the company is poor management, obviously, and making some bad deals. Uh, they partnered hardcore with Rock Band 4. That didn't pan out. Rock Band 4 did not take off like the people who made the game hoped it would. And obviously, the way that Mad Cat's were, they had a lot of money tied up in Rock Band 4 uh, and making all the peripherals for that, and it failed. The the whole Guitar Hero Rock Band era is kind of past us. I know there was a recent Guitar Hero game, like, what, two, three, four years ago? But, again, we're talking years ago. Uh, I was actually shocked when I went to my local roller skate rink. Yes, we still have roller skate rinks in this area, or at least one of them. And they had a Rock Band arcade game there. It It's kind of cool. It reminds me of an older era of gaming. Uh, and I think it perfectly fits well into an arcade setting, just like you could still see some of those dancing games out there, Dance Dance Revolution. So, Mad Cats is no more. Uh, their most recent announcement, uh, I think it was in January, I believe it was for Tekken 7, uh, about a fight stick, and it turns out that fight stick was just 
a reskin of a controller they already had a fight stick they already created so it didn't improve anything it wasn't new if you owned an older mad cats fight stick you already had what this new version was minus the art and there's a lot of ways you can skin these things so there's no reason to necessarily buy a new thing just for art uh unless you're a collector <laughs> and I, I don't know anyone who collected mad cats merchandise uh i, I know people that collect amiibo People who collect Pokemon cards, people who even collect the Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing cards or football cards, baseball cards, etc. I understand, you know, people who collect coins. Mad Cats is just not stuff you collect. Um, I don't know anyone who's like, yeah, I'm a big Mad Cats fan, but still, it's part of my childhood that's gone, and I have to say, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna miss them. Like, I know there's other companies out there that have done things a little better. Uh, I, I already mentioned it before, PDP is one of the major companies that supports Nintendo Switch and is supporting Nintendo and has officially licensed things. That's why they were able to make themed GameCube controllers for the Wii U that weren't really GameCube controllers, but whatever. The, the point is, is that Nintendo allowed them to do that. They signed a licensing deal. And not everything PDP makes is crap, just like not everything Mad Cats made over the years was crap. I used to have a Mad Cats controller for my PC, for PC games, and it was fine. Uh, I used it for, I think, three or four years until I lost it during a move, and that's when, uh, by then, Xbox 360 had come out, and I was able to pair my 360 controller, so I didn't really have a reason to buy a new one. Still, Mad Cats is gone. Part of my childhood is gone, and, you know, what, what I want to hear from you guys is what are some of your favorite Mad Cats peripheral stories you have over the years? Maybe it's just a peripheral you still use today, Maybe it's uh, a peripheral that surprisingly broke during a really bad situation in a game. Maybe you lost, you know, five years worth of save data on your Nintendo 64. Uh, whatever the case may be, let me know down in the comments what your favorite memory from Mad Cats was. And I, I'm going to miss them. I'm get, this is how I could tell I'm getting old. Things from my childhood are slowly starting to disappear. Mad Cats, you had a good run. Sorry you bet big on Rock Band and it didn't work out. This is Nate from Nintendo Prime, signing out.